Let's talk about Stanley Kowalski. Right. Much ado, when he first appears on the scene, you know, sweaty and then coming from bowling, whatever, he's like, oh my God, drop dead gorgeous. Um, the shirts that men wear, the white t-shirts, they're called white beaters. They're called white beaters for a reason. They're named after Stanley Kowalski. In fact, this type of t-shirt was actually, the costume designers took a loose t-shirt that men wear underneath their shirt and would cut it and then reseam it so it fits so snugly on his body, okay? And just to showcase his physique, his des desire, right? And it's not just the desire that women have for him, the men, he controls the men in his life, right? So Mitch is sort of like the beta male. It's like the, the wingman. And Mitch is sexually inexperienced. I don't think he's ever been with a woman. He's very tied to his mother, right? He's lots of mommy issues. And that's one of the reasons why he doesn't want to marry Blanche because you're not clean enough for my mommy. Uh, but Steve and all the, uh, Pablo, they're all controlled by, by Mitch um, on the street. Everyone says hi to Mitch. Mitch is a well-liked guy, right? He is the typical alpha male, and he does what he wants to do. No one tells him anything. He will use physical force, throwing things, yelling, hitting, punching. Uh, he yells at the people in the bowling alley. I said, I don't want to bowl at O'Reilly's. I'm going to bowl here, okay? I'm the team captain. So he controls everything, right? And most people are fine because if I'm on the Stanley wagon, I'm going to be okay, right? And Mitch was going to marry Blanche, but then Stanley's like, there's no way I'm going to have my buddy. You know, we were in the, we were in the army together. There's no way I'm going to let my buddy marry that woman. Uh, and he does care for Mitch, right? Now he has his own motivations. I want to get this woman out of my apartment so I can go back to getting the red lights going, going back to my sex life. He, his sex life? He's, his sex life is down the toilet, right? With Blanche living, sleeping on a bed that doesn't have much give, right? So their bedroom is right here. There's no privacy. This guy has no privacy. And his world is being destroyed by this uppity woman who is intelligent and comes in with all her big furs and diamond tiaras. So from Stanley's perspective, it's like, who do you think you are to improve me? You're calling me an ape? You're calling me, you know, a subhuman, right? Um, is he? Well, look how he eats. He eats with his fingers. He doesn't use, he, he just chugs beer. He, he's, he's a bit of an animal, but he likes it that way, right? It's like, don't you judge me. Um, we can judge him. Um, and of course, how he dresses, he's always in a state of, like, undress. He undresses in front of his, uh, from, for everybody. Um, he's usually sweaty. He looks like an animal. He eats like an animal. Um, he clears his plate and throws things. I mean, he's just, he's just the way he is. Um, does that excuse his behavior? No. Does that excuse that he uh, rapes his sister-in-law and beats up his wife? No, he's an awful person, right? But if you're Stanley Kowalski and you're, you have your life and you're a mechanic and you have your bowling buddies and you have your poker night and suddenly this woman comes in and starts like cleaning up your room and improving you and like you're gonna be resistant to that okay um, I'm not sure you would like your grandmother to come into your room and or your sister-in-law to say I'm gonna improve you I don't like the clothes you're wearing I don't like you know I'm gonna put some slip covers over the chairs I'm gonna put something over the light and I organize some things right you would go crazy too now of course you wouldn't do the things that he does right but you know but Stanley's Stanley, right? Um, and the only time he seems to look really nice is at the end uh, of the play. He's dressed. Um, there's one time he comes in, but even that, 
one time, uh, he gets disheveled pretty quickly and his clothes are ripping, of course, in the shower when he says the famous Stella scene, uh, which is probably the, one of the most famous scenes in, in American drama. In fact, in New Orleans, they have a Stella contest where they get down on their knees and scream Stella. And so it's, it's one of the most famous scenes. And it's his call, it's the desire, right? It's, it's just physical desire that Stanley has over everyone, and uh, most importantly, his wife, right? And she loves it. You know, she loved when he was just smashing the light bulbs, turn them off with her slipper. Um, Blanche's like, oh, were you, you know, that was crazy. No, I, I was thrilled by it, she says. Um, she has power, he has power over Blanche. Blanche, in some way, um, also desires him. She says, I was flirting with your husband, and can you zip me up? So, uh, he, has, he has power over his friends. He has power over everything, right? He's Huey Long, and I'm king here, right? So, we can see, perhaps, the divide in our country today between those that are the elites of New York, and this goes back to Andrew Jackson, um, when he would call the New Yorkers the eels for the elites, and he would support the common man, um, uneducated, uh, that's the salt of the earth, you know, um, the bread and butter of America. And there's this race, there's, I keep saying race, there's, there's class uh, division that is constantly tension here, okay? Uh, in the South, we definitely have more of a, not more of, but it's very distinct between the plantation owners that are very rich, the poor white trash who have to compete with free labor. And that's where we get the racism. And if you read the book, uh, 400 Years of uh, uh, Class History in America, um, the wealthy used racism to keep power, to keep their their castles and, and, and their wealth, uh, because who can compete with free labor, right? Uh, if you're a poor white trash, uh, which the nickname was Crackers, and there's all a bunch of names uh, for poor white trash, um, that, okay, I'm gonna pick on the person who I'm competing with. Really, I should be upset with the person that's keeping me poor, but, so, but you just use race, right? Uh, race isn't a, isn't a huge issue in Streetcar Named Desire because in New Orleans they all mix together. So we have Eunice and Stephen, and, and Eunice is talking to a Negro woman in the beginning, and it's New Orleans. We're all thrown in this together. Um, and so that's my little analysis of Stanley Kowalski.